bird's eye view for track work this morning from the Warwick Farm Trainers Hut ahead of another cracking day of racing in Sydney at Rose Hill. We have the Tancred Stakes where we see the best of our wait for age stayers step out as well as the Phillies. They do need to take on Orchestral, the Kiwi star who steps off the plane this evening. We have the latest from a beautiful autumnal morning at track work here at Warwick Farm. Well, guys, let's touch on your runners from the weekend and how they've come through. The first, Tender Eyes, who I've backed every start this prep and probably will keep backing, particularly off that run on Saturday. Yeah, no luck from him again. Just stepped away slowly and got back into a position where we, we, we didn't anticipate he'd be. Had a lot of traffic, but late he was good. He's getting through the line strongly, so we'll work out where we're going to go now. Could end up at Wellington even. There's the, uh, the Wellington Cup, which gets you into the big dance. So that's an option for us. We'll keep an eye on him. And then NCAP, the ever so brave NCAP. How's he pulled up? Yeah, look, he pulled up well. A um, little bit disappointed the lack of speed he showed this weekend. It was sort of, a, he's, a, he's, he's by capless. You wouldn't think you'd be looking for 2,000 metres, but I think when the gates opened and they'd gone 50 metres, I thought it was him in the Rose Hill Guineas. He, he just wanted to settle them. He ended up a long way off the winner settling. I thought his run was good. He's ran six, beaten two and a quarter lengths. Good run, but just impossible task back there. And it wasn't anyone's fault. He just, just didn't have the gate speed. Does he ever miss an oat or does he always come home and just do everything right? No, nah, he's a good boy. He just goes home and eats and you don't even know he's in the stables until you walk past his box and he calls you over for a pat, so <laughs> it's a beauty. Let's look ahead to the weekend and you've got a really handy team, of course, Komochi in the Vinery Stud Stakes coming off a third in the Coolmore. Huge run in the Coolmore, steps up to 2,000. This is the, the distance that everyone's been saying we're looking for. Um, it's a tough test though, this is a very, very strong addition of the, the Vinery I'd say this year, the, the New Zealand looks like it's a superstar. So um, we're going to need a good, get a good draw and, um, and hopefully uh, uh, she runs top three, I'll be over the moon, another group one placing to her name, but it'd uh, be even better if she could beat um, you know, what is touted to be a couple of the, 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 the best three-year-old fillies in Australia. An orchestral steps off the plane from New Zealand tonight, who you were mentioning, I think there's, a, there's obviously been a huge rap on her, but did you think that Komochi early days would be such a decent three-year-old that she's at now, even when we saw her as a handy two-year-old? We were hoping, I think we all do, but she's improved every preparation and um, you know, the, her run the Coolmore was phenomenal. You just, I know she had a light weight, but she was three deep facing the breeze all the way on the top of the speed uh, and was still cracking away uh, at, at the line, beating uh, you know, like a, a, I think it was a neck or a, or a head. So her, her run was phenomenal. Uh, she's come through it. Her work was really good this morning. We were happy with the way she worked. She's very sharp and happy. So we're going to go on the race, you know, into a 2,000 metre race. Um, confident we've got the horse absolutely purring. Um, the feedback from both uh, uh, Craig Williams and, uh, and Jason Collop when they rode, I think Jason rode her in the, in the, uh, the, in the, uh, the flight stakes. And, uh, and he said she's looking for 2,000, but our option was to go to, to, to Melbourne to try and win the 1,000 guineas. Craig rode her 1,000 guineas and said, I can't wait to ride her over 2,000 metres. So feedback has been, when she gets to this, this part of the time of a campaign, that she's, she's looking to settle, and they're all saying try her over 2,000. So I couldn't be more confident that I've got her absolutely spot on for the weekend. We get a test of the 2,000 now. We certainly do. Very much looking forward to seeing her and another horse who's been ever so consistent for your stable and just seems to turn up week in, week out is Kintyre and the Tullock. Yeah, he's honest. He's a half brother to Fireburns, we know, and um, he just turns up week after week. He's a good run last week. Um, the winner went past him. He's tied to the fence. Actually, one of the favourites for the Vinery, the, the Godolphin uh, filly. Um, but then he was good again late. So he just had that flat patch when we needed him. And again, this is his first, his second go at 2000. He's running the Spring Champ. It was just a forgive run. He just had a shocker. Um, had no luck at all. Uh, but he's had a good preparation, this is what he's been named at, so um, this is not much his grand final, but it's certainly one of the lead-ups to uh, potentially a Brisbane campaign. Interesting to think of him back to the early days when he was a two-year-old and he stepped out, particularly that day he got scratched behind the barriers because he was carrying on and walking around on um, five legs. He's a different horse now. He had that, um, that, that chop that quietens <laughs> the best of them down. Uh, he was a really bad colt and we tried to keep him cold as long as we could because obviously being a half-brother to a Golden Slipper winner, but he was going to retire a non-winner otherwise, and now we've just got a really good, honest horse. He's going to race for the next four or five seasons and hopefully keep him at this level. That's what we love. Uh, Flying Argento is a horse I, I've not seen a great deal of. I know he came up against Spyway last preparation, but you've got him down there in the Bayou. He's first up off two trials. Yeah, look, he's um, he's a lovely big leggy staying type. He's by D'Argento, as you, as you said. Um, this is just part of our process for later on. We're hoping potentially it could be a, 
a nice classic horse for us uh, later in the spring. Um, you know, he's, he's just a nice horse, work. he's a work in progress. Matt, let's just uh, touch on Buenos Noches. How has he come through the run? He looked like he was hitting the line strongly and really keen to see him over maybe even a bit further this prep. Yeah, look, um, I definitely take the blinkers off him. Um, he seemed to get out sprinted there on the weekend, but he was good through the line. Look, he's pulled up super. We can't see any problem with him whatsoever. The horse is bouncing. So uh, I think we'll just get the blinkers off him and regroup. And hopefully, uh, if he can work well and continue to work well between now and the uh, the TJ, we'll probably, probably just keep heading in that direction. Um, look, the all age would be, looks like the way his racing might be better suited there. But um, we'll just see what happens over the next 10 days. Obviously a bit of a fresh morning here, we've got that chill in the air, but a few of the horses are feeling well, he was one of them, he was bucking on, so take nothing out of that Saturday run. Yeah, look, Dylan, I, I can't really take much out of it, Dylan just said get the blinkers off him, ASAP. He said he didn't feel as confident in the blinkers, he certainly didn't let go, um, but he sort of worked through the line okay, so uh, um, we can't see anything at home anyway, the reason why he performed that way other than the, the blinkers, so we'll, we'll get them off, go from there. Let's look then to Estefany, who you've got nommed for the Neville Selwood on the weekend. He was a marvel there. Oh, he's been a marvel really the whole way through since you've had him, since he came out here. But he was great at Flemington the other day. He was much better at Flemington. Um, you know, he just had a few soundness issues through the back of last preparation, and uh, uh, we nearly retired him actually. But he, he's really sound, um, and his run was excellent uh, in the. Uh, in the race in the Australian Cup prelude and look he's in the Australian Cup and he's in the Neville Selwood it's probably a flip of the coin and uh, I mean obviously the Australian Cup's a really strong race but uh, look I'll maybe chat to the owners and see what they think um, and go from there horses work's been good uh, we'll move on to Time Quest then who you've also got nom there either on Wednesday or Saturday third up what are you thinking with him yeah look probably better suited at the mile than the 14 I think what I've seen at home um, we're probably not going to get a track. Uh, the tracks will be similar, I would say. Um, I do think he's better with a wet, on a wet track for sure. But um, we may not get that opportunity. It looks like both tracks will be sort of good. So um, he's drawn well Wednesday, most likely run Wednesday. And Estero, a first up winner, you see going second up now into Saturday's race there for the Whirlpool Handicap. What are your thoughts with him? Yeah, he's good, really good actually. Um, he's excellent first up. And uh, I, there's a bit of rain forecast for Queensland, so uh, that race looks a, a good race for him. So he'll most likely will accept there, see how he draw. If we draw well, we'll head to Queensland. We talk about uh, your horses heading to Melbourne and Queensland and you're not afraid to travel them for the right race and, and mapping out a plan for them. Is that something that um, you're looking to do more often? You've had a lot of success with it in the past 12 months. Yeah, look, we've been uh, keen to travel horses for many years now. We, we, uh, I love taking them interstate and... Uh, now we've got a little satellite stable in Melbourne at Flemington. It makes it a lot easier too to travel into Melbourne. But uh, I think if the races are right, the horses are well and they draw good, uh, you, you know, you just as much, well, sometimes they're better placed actually in the state. Little, the races are a little bit easier than Sydney. So now we're keen uh, to move those horses around and hopefully Estero can draw a gate on Saturday. I'd just like to ask you first of all about Osmosis and how he's come through Saturday. Lucky Rach stayed aboard. Gee, she can sit on them. Yeah, it was lucky. It was um, yes, yeah, pretty tough day on on Saturday to to go through that. Not only having rates, a bit of a scary moment, but then yeah, just the, the disappointment with um, Osmosis. So it was pretty devastating. But thankfully, rider and, and horse have come through well, and he's in good order. So uh, yeah, we'll push on from now. He's he's had a few issues like that that he's, he's shown us at the gates. He was in the Roman Consul last year, but didn't give us any warning on Saturday. Uh, he was really well behaved and pre-race and we thought he was going to put it all together but unfortunately just got that little bit of immaturity about him so we'll do a bit of work with him and, and hopefully we can sort of get back on track and uh, and get to the Arrowfield. I did see him at the barriers and he looked like he was doing everything right so it was a bit of a shock when he all of a sudden was up in the air and Rach's yeah. feet were out of the iron. Yeah it was and, and Rach said even in the gates he doesn't give you any inclination. He stood in there for a good while, they're sort of taking a while to get the others in and then once he does sort of uh, do a bit wrong, he finds it hard to bring himself back down. So unfortunately yeah, it went pear-shaped Saturday but uh, onward and, and hopefully we can get it right next time. How did she manage to get her feet back in the irons? That was phenomenal. No, she, she, she had one that landed back in when she first came down and then she spent till the turn trying to get the, uh, get the other one back in. So uh, it was interesting. Um, he actually ran the fastest 
200 metres of the race. Uh, and he's done that with her with one iron in the ring. <laughs> so she, all she could think of was what Bjorn would do if she let him go or fell off. So she was just trying to swing to him and anything she could. And then once she got that second iron back in, she just pulled him up and let him roll to the line. So. She's the girl for the job when that happens though, isn't it? Not that you ever want to see it. Let's look ahead to Saturday and in the Doncaster Prelude, you've got a more victorious nom there. He's coming off a run in the Ajax. Yeah, it, it sort of all went a little bit pear-shaped in the Ajax. It was a bit of a messy race and and him and Fearson sort of got into a bit of a battle uh, with each other. So he stuck on okay in that race. Um, I thought he was pretty solid to the line considering the, the tempo that they went. So uh, he was five weeks between runs of the trial into that. So he was a touch fresh. So we're hoping that he probably might relax a little bit more in this race. And if he can draw a nice gate, we thought he was up to, to the Ajax field and he was very firm in the market that day. So if he can reproduce his best, he's, he's not out of a race like this. Uh, then into the Star Kingdom, you've got I Know A Star who is resuming. Yeah, so he, he had a great record last time and he went all the way to the big dance and unfortunately he probably just had enough when he came there, but he you know, put four on end last time in. So it's a step up for him, the Group 3 company, and probably short of his best distance, but we'll just have a look. We've also got him in the 88-1400 as well. We'll just weigh up both options, but uh, he potentially could make his uh, make a case for himself going forward to potentially a Brisbane Carnival or a Scone Cup. And Malkovich, rock hard fit now, he's coming through a last start run in the Canterbury Stakes behind Lady Laguna. How's he been through the prep? Yeah, he's been good. He, he was sort of trying to reinvent him a little bit and stretch him out a little bit more. He's from 1300 back to 1200, which will suit him a bit. Um, and he likes to roll, roll in front. He probably, probably just went a touch slow the other day, um, but back to 1200 will suit him a lot better. Um, He's in a race like this, he gets down in the weights too, so um, that'll help him, but uh, look, he's very honest. Then on to Renaissance Woman, who we see in the Neville Selwood, she's coming off a run in the Coolmore, Rach was aboard there and she was seventh behind Zoo Gotcha. Yeah, she was super in the Coolmore, the race wasn't running to suit uh, a mare like her, she was back in the field, but I thought she worked the line really well, she wasn't beaten far sort of 1500s uh, with unsuitable distance as well so she gets up to the 2000 on Saturday which she's been at before we've sort of had question marks whether she runs a good 2000 but um, she's got some good form around it and I think she's probably ready for a third up and and then sort of got our eyes on on back to the mile for the Cornwall legacy uh, in a couple of weeks after. One of the best looking horses I think I've seen in a while, Hollywood Hero, the son of Sacred Falls, uh, he's first up there in the benchmark 88, will he likely run? Yeah, I think so. We'll just have a good think about it with him. He's, he's one of my favourites as well. I've always had a lot of time for him and I, I think he's still getting there. He's been very sort of mentally immature and um, he's slowly getting there. But I think he's definitely a stakes horse in the making. We'll just hopefully he can uh, progress a little bit more this time in. And, and 1400 is always hard, but he's got a good racing pattern. He gets back and runs on. So uh, it's probably a question mark whether he makes the field. But if he gets in, I think he'll probably take his place. And Arapaho, how's he been since their setback? Yeah, so uh, he had a virus unfortunately, he's back in the stable and he's doing well. He's um, going to head towards the trials at Rose Hill next Friday and try and get his campaign back on track. Unfortunately, sort of grand finals and things like the Tankard was his uh, a main aim this prep and unfortunately he'll miss that. But uh, it'll give us an opportunity to potentially head towards a Brisbane campaign with him now. and. Um, It'll actually lead into a, a good setup to, to something like a Caulfield Cup in the spring, which uh, we saw from last year. The, the Brisbane sort of platform works well, leading to that. So, yeah, disappointing to miss uh, miss these races in uh, in the autumn, but. Um, Hopefully we can come in the back end of it and then maybe head to Queensland. Got to ask you about your girls on the weekend. They were both super. We'll start with Sunshine in Paris. She's come back in nice order. Yeah, really good order. It was uh, one of those really nearly weekends. Um, but it was just great to see her really attack the line after um, having had that setback. But she, I think she's come back better again. And um, yeah, she'll head now to the TJ. One to watch. Uh, and then, of course, Lady Laguna, who's just in a purple patch. She is a brave horse. Yeah, she's amazing. She's gone to a whole new level and I think she proved on Saturday that the, the Canterbury Stakes was no fluke. She's really now cementing herself as a wait for age horse, which I have to say we never thought she would. We, she's always been above average, but we never thought she was going to make um, yeah, those sort of leaps. So I thought she ran really well. She ran, the, I think, the second quickest last 200 of the race. So she ran out that trip, no issue at all. And um, yeah, at this stage, we're going to head towards the, the Doncaster, where I think she looks really well weighted. With 51, obviously those weights came out and 
um, before she won the Canterbury Stakes. And, and um, yeah, I think she looks one of the best weighted horses in that race. Looking back when she won on the Gold Coast and she was up there, did you think that she would be in for such a good preparation? Um, no, well, yes and no. I mean, she's, she's one of those fillies. We've always managed to have really long preparations with her. Um, I mean, this time last year, she raced in all three states. Um, she just loves racing. But yeah, I didn't necessarily think she'd go on to, to do quite what she's done. Um, and it's just so exciting for OTI. So um, hopefully the, the role keeps on going. She just keeps turning up as she always does. Uh, let's look to the Tancred then. And another one of the girls, Little Mix, will we see her maybe back up there? Yeah, I think she may back up. It probably doesn't look as vintage as, as some years that race. She's in the Neville Selwood as well. Um, but I thought her run was really good in the Epona. She ran fourth there, but she drawn wide and, and had to come all the way back and make a pretty long run, making up a lot of ground. But um, she's going really well and she's probably ready to step up in distance now. Bois d'Argent, a second up off that run in the Randwick City Stakes. Yeah, he we scratched him from the Randvet to, to save him for this weekend. He's in the Neville Selwood and the Tancred, but we're probably leaning towards the Tancred. Probably glad we avoided the, the Randvet. Um, the winner looked extremely impressive. Um, but I think his work this morning was good. I think he's come back. He obviously went to another level last preparation. He sort of finished the, the prep with a fourth in the Caulfield Cup. But I think he's, I think he's improved again. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to getting him up in distance as well. And I think he's going to be really competitive in a, in a race like the Tancred. We've also got hope, hopeful Jill Nomd. What are your thoughts with him? Yeah, hopeful. Um, he needs rain um, and there, there doesn't look to be too much around. So he'll probably, he, he's also you know, a horse that really does need a trip. So hopefully um, go to the chairman's if we can get a bit of rain. Uh, Hill hath no fury in the emancipation. She's coming off a run in the Coolmore and prior to that she was a winner of the guy Walter. What are your thoughts with her? Yeah, she's. this is her last run of the prep, um, but it was sort of hard to find a reason to put her out because she's just so well in herself. But that was a, obviously she's ticked the box now of being a Group 2 winner, which, um, you know, earlier on in the prep we probably never would have thought. Um, so I thought she ran creditably in the Coolmore. She was probably in the wrong part of the track and, you know, perhaps not up to... Um, those Group 1 horses like Zugotia, but uh, maybe back in a race like the Emancipation, um, I think if she can draw a gate, she should be competitive. The very good looking Libertad, uh, you've got Nom there for the Star Kingdom. After his heart arrhythmia, he came out and ran super in the Morris McCartan. What are you thinking with him? Yeah, he was really good, um, and I think he's yeah he's come through that really well. Um, so we're just the, the arrow field is the race um, that we've circled in the calendar. That's where we want to be peaking. But we've nommed him in the Star Kingdom. Um, we'll just see what you know what the weights look like. There's um, quite a lot of highly rated horses in that race. So um, I've also there's a race here on Monday that we've got him in a, a benchmark hundred as well. So um, not set on running him unless everything looks right. Hopefully he can get a nice barrier because he had a tough run the other day. But um, he was really good late to run second and. Um, he's on track for the Arrowfield. If we don't, if we don't um, have a run in between, it won't be the end of the world. One of your European imports who we've seen on one occasion when he came out and he ran first up there in the Five Diamonds, you've got nommed for the Doncaster Prelude. How's he settled in second preparation in Australia? Yeah, uh, Jimi Hendrix, he's a really nice horse, um, only a little horse, but um, well credentialed. Um, he was a, a winner at Royal Ascot. Um, nothing really went his way um, when he ran off the plane last preparation, but he's trialling up like a horse that's probably going to get over 10 furlongs. He's finding them a bit sharp in the trials, but I think the prelude's probably a nice starting point. We've got Tom Mark on booked for him if we head there. Um, again, you probably want to draw a gate with him. Um, he had a tough run from a wide draw last prep. He's a horse I think you want to just tuck in behind them. Um, if not, he may go to a race like the Musselbrook Cup end of next week. But um, yeah, he'll be an acceptor for Saturday and we'll have a look at the race. Another famous man in history, Matthew Flinders. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Flinders, he's been a frustrating horse. He did a tendon when he first got here and then he stood on a nail. So he's bit, sort of hardly raced over, over a two-year period. But he's trialled up really well. Um, we've given him three just to make sure he's... Um, as forward as we can have him and he heads to the 88 1400 um, we've got Angus young Angus Villiers booked to ride him there a uh, good young English apprentice and um, he'll take a little bit of weight off him and Nish I, I can't believe I've forgotten him but gear up either in the Tancred or maybe Melbourne yeah he, um, he's in Melbourne at the moment we'll have we've got him in the um, 2600 meter race at Flemington and he's also in the Tancred probably be a dual acceptor um, leaning towards the Tancred we've got Nash 
um, booked for him there. Um, he's going really well. He didn't want to know about it last preparation, so um, we gelded him and um, he's a completely different horse this time in. Obviously he hadn't had his head in front for a long time when he won at Caulfield the other day, so he should take nice confidence from that. Let's look to the weekend and in the Tancred you've got Ashran who's a last start Pakenham Cup winner. How's he travelled up to Sydney from Melbourne? Uh, he hasn't yet. Uh, he's, still, he's still in Melbourne but he's coming up. Uh, he travelled up tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, it looks a lovely race for him. Uh, he's at a two runs now, uh, 2,500 metres, uh, definitely suits and yeah, it should be a good chance. So what will his work in Melbourne be? Will he have a gallop the Sydney way? Uh, yes, yeah, uh, they've got the options to do that. Uh, he's well travelled, obviously he's a German horse, uh, so that should be no issue for him. And yeah, uh, they've been happy with him and he's obviously very fit now. So uh, going different way of going will be no issue. Uh, in the Tulloch, you've got a couple, Dunbelieven, who's had the two runs in Melbourne so far. We haven't seen him in Sydney and Mornington Pier, who was the last start winner at Newcastle. Uh, yeah, uh, both are in Melbourne. Uh, we had planned to run in Alistair Clark uh, on Saturday, but both uh, were emergencies at didn't get a run. So they'll have to come up here and yeah, if they run well, uh, we keen to back them up in a derby next week. Uh, Ruthless Dame, who you've got nommed for either the Emancipation or the Star Kingdom, which way are you leaning with her at this stage? Uh, we just keep an eye on the weather. Uh, if uh, we did get some rain, probably uh, run over 1200, uh, but if we don't, uh, which it looks unlikely we get some, uh, the Emancipation would be the more likely. And then she's all class also nommed there for the Emancipation third up coming through a run in the Winona Girl. Uh, yeah, uh, open trip. Uh, she's a mare who can take a few runs to uh, to be fit and mentally uh, to be where we want her to be. Uh, she's not always the easiest, but improve from the first to a second up run and yeah, ready to run uh, better again. Uh, she will just keep improving with every run, but a second up run was very, uh, very positive. Let's look through a few that you've got nommed for the Doncaster Prelude. The first and probably most excitingly, another Will who Jamie Carr had a trial aboard uh, on the 18th of March and of course prior to that a really nice winner at Flemington. Uh, yeah, he's obviously a horse uh, who just keeps impressing. Uh, he's three runs this prep. Uh, yeah, he was very dominant every time. Keeps stepping up the bar. Uh, Jamie Carr has a big opinion of him and she was keen to stick with him uh, wherever he was going. So he had a tick of a trial last week at Rose Hill just to, uh, for him to have a look at uh, this way of going. Uh, trial very well, he's come through that well. A uh, piece of work yesterday, and yeah, uh, he's not going to run yet uh, in Doncaster Prelude, uh, but if he does uh, get run there, ideally, uh, love to win, uh, and then he will back up in Doncaster next week. And your other three that are nommed there Nugget, Berkshire Shadow, and Southport Tycoon, your thoughts with them? Uh, Nugget's unlikely. Berkshire Shadow, uh, we'll just make a call uh, tomorrow morning, see if we, accept, if we accept or not. At this stage, we're leaning towards accepting. And Southport Tycoon, we uh, have a trial this morning here, take over trial and run in the Doncaster next week. Odinson in the Bailu, who was the last start runner in the Black Opal, who ran fourth, it probably just didn't set up that well for him, but he looked like he had a bit in hand as he hit the line. Uh, yeah, uh, ran well, uh, just he's a fairly casual uh, kind of colt, uh, so we put a bl set of blinkers on him uh, this week, see uh, that can help him to travel a bit better and just to quicken a bit better. Uh, stepping up in trip, uh, we will try that uh, for the first time, but very happy with him, his feet, and yeah, obviously he's probably not as good as some of those uh, better two-year-olds, but he's not far behind him. And then, I won't try and keep you all morning, we could be here all morning with the amount of runners you've got, but uh, in the Neville Selwood, Cadre du Noir, Normandy Bridge, Circle of Fire, Future History and United Nations, any of those likely to start? If so, who? Uh, we will have a couple. Uh, United Nations, uh, likely to get his prep started uh, there. Uh, he's been based at the beach, he's had a good base. Uh, he's been trialling uh, well for him, uh, the further the better. So lucky to get him started there. Uh, Normandy Bridge came up from Melbourne uh, to possibly run there. Um, just keep an eye on the track with him. Uh, it does like a bit of give, so if it happened to be too dry, uh, we probably reconsider that, but uh, he's ready to go there. And yeah, just make a call in the morning uh, with uh, the others. Well, Tom, firstly, we do, of course, need to ask about post-impressionist. Dee did it easily on the weekend. Yeah, it was um, obviously a real big performance and uh, great for the team to have managed to sort of pull it off again. It's been a pretty, pretty remarkable record. Um, but we've been obviously really pleased with him since he got here and um, just 
really happy with the way he stepped forward into it all and um, look whether, whether it sets us up into this weekend or, or a Sydney Cup obviously we'll, we'll see how the next few days goes I go, yeah I guess but um, he's, he's, he's really showing the right signs of um, what you'd want to go into a group one with Good. We always say that Haggis and Marquin combination, hard to contend with. Uh, we need to look ahead to this weekend then, and excitingly you're on Zardozzi coming up against the good Kiwi Philly. Yeah, obviously big clash. Um, uh, not um, yeah, not something that's um, you know taken lightly. I think she, she looks like an extremely good filly, obviously the, the Kiwi Philly, but um, you know, Zardozzi was, went massive the other day. She's shown how good she was in the VRC Oaks and... Um, Look, she's a she's a top class Group One filly with a big turn of foot, and obviously that was a um, an inadequate trip for her the other day, and she still managed to do what she did, and um, yeah, it leaves you leaves you looking forward to what might be to come this weekend. Absolutely, uh, you're aboard Odinson, who you rode in the Black Opal in the Bale U. It probably just didn't set up for him that well in the way that the race panned out, but he hit the line well. Yeah, he did exactly that. Um, no, we'd probably end up on a part of the track that made things a bit tougher. It was just where we had to challenge. Um, but he, he goes up a furlong um, and he's, he's quite a casual sort of laid back little horse. I, I, I like his attitude in that, you know, it's nice. You can you can always switch horses on. It's hard to switch them off. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's he's um, he's probably going in, in a bit under the radar. Obviously, he's, he's, he's shown glimpses of what he's got, but I, I feel like he's, he's probably one that hasn't probably fully shown what's in the tank yet. Uh, you bought another European import in walking painting for the Freedmans. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, uh, trialled trialled really good at, at Rose Hill, and then that run the other day, um, it just just shortened up late. You'd, you'd kind of just hope change in racing style, obviously, um, and and first run down here, things just um, caught him out a bit. So, look, hopefully he'll have improved a bit from that run and 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 can um, go a little bit better. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.